we have some experiments here where we are trying to see if it's possible to intensify uh, Danish agriculture in a sustainable way. It's, it's a buzzword that's used uh, often now, it's uh, sustainable intensification, but often it's maybe only small improvements. Here we have the hypothesis that we can double productivity and half the environmental impact from Danish crop production. One of the main uh, tools that we expect to use for this is uh, to use perennial grasses that has a long that have a long growing season. Uh, this is actually what we want to, to do is to change a bit uh, from some of the usual crops used in Danish agriculture which are grain crops like barley and wheat, maize and and also rapeseed that has a significant period uh, over the growing season where they are not photosynthetically active and not utilizing the radiation from the sun which is the primary resource that we are going to extract. Uh, on the other hand these perennial grasses ha have a long growing season uh, as soon as it uh, gets warm in spring they start growing and they continue until frost uh, stops the show in, in late autumn. Uh, and we are now in the middle of um, October, actually a little bit across the middle of October, and I'm standing in, in two grass crops. Uh, behind me you can see uh, the Miscanthus crop, which is uh, still awaiting to, to be harvested. Uh, and uh, we uh, still have a little bit of uh, production in it. Uh, we've had very slight frost, but not serious yet, so it's still green and productive. And I'm standing uh, in another grass crop, which is a festulolium. Uh, it's a more conventional uh, cut grass uh, that is also sometimes used uh, from, uh, from cattle farmers. Um, but it's a very productive uh, conventional seed tree uh, cut grass that we have harvested three times in three cuts over the season. And we have taken the, the last cut. We have from the first year some very promising results, especially from the uh, Festulolium. Uh, Miscanthus has had some years, they, uh, Miscanthus takes some years to establish, but this year it seems to be fully, fully established and I'm curious to see how, how much it is producing this year. Uh, but Festulolium has produced uh, the first years between 50 and more than 100 percent more biomass than the conventional crops from Danish agriculture like barley and wheat. This is when we combine the, the straw and the grain yield of barley and wheat, then we have double the amount of, of uh, biomass uh, in the grass crops. That's the one benefit uh, the grass crops can, can give us. The other benefit is that they leach much less nitrogen than the grain crops and especially much less than the maize, which uh, in our system here is the the crop that loses most uh, nitrate. But even the, uh, compared with the grain crops, uh, the grass crops uh, have only some 30% of the nitrate leaching level uh, of the grain crops, uh, which means that we can more than half uh, the impact on the environment in terms of uh, nitrogen, use, uh, nitrogen losses uh, to the aquatic environment and this is at the same time as we double the productivity of, of biomass. So I think this is very promising. Uh, then uh, the only question you could uh, pose then is what to do with all that grass? Uh, because uh, Danish farmers at the moment of course produce the grass they need for their cattle and no more. So uh, this is another part of the experimentation going on at uh, our university is to see how we can extract uh, protein from the grasses in order to produce a protein feed that can more or less substitute the soy that is uh, mainly used for protein feeding uh, in Danish husbandry today. Uh, and also there I think we have some promising results uh, but we still need to, to have some more details before we can uh, propose a, a, a real commercial uh, system for, uh, for protein uh, production from grasses. Uh, but the, the, the idea is that 
if we extract uh, the protein from the grass, uh, we can we can sell that as a, a protein feed for monogastric animals like uh, pigs and and uh, poultry, and then the grass fiber can still be used for uh, uh, for cattle feeding. It's still a valuable cattle feed. Uh, but on the other hand, we can also choose to use the grass fiber for bioenergy, and it will. Uh, it's quite uh, certain that it will be a good feedstock for biogas, but we have to test that uh, in more detail. It might also be used for a hydrothermal liquefaction, which is a process that produces a bio-oil of, a, of a, a quality that can be upgraded to, to use as a biofuel in, in cars. Uh, and, and in that way, uh, by producing more on the same land with less impact on the environment, we think there is a possibility of, of uh, using more biomass for energy uh, because we can sustain the current uh, production of food and feed from Danish agriculture and in addition have some extra biomass that we can use for, for bioenergy.